afternoon from Hopalong Hollow. It's mid-March and we're going to take a garden tour today. Even though it's really not the time of the year when you would normally take a garden tour. Because things are not exactly busting out all over. But the gardens are beginning to wake up. And that's when it's really fun to go out there, poke into the earth, and see if your bulbs and your seeds and your perennials that you've planted in the past and all those wonderful things and all the work that you put in over the last couple months and during the winter have come to fruition in your garden. So I think we're going to walk around about four or five different gardens here, some of which are pretty messy right now, just to see what's going on. And we will start at the front porch. You may remember this little area by the front steps and the frog pond where I had planted dozens and dozens of bulbs. I spent a good deal of time in one of the videos planting those bulbs. And you can see that um, that progression of color that I was talking about, the progression of bulbs coming up, is doing exactly as it was supposed to. So here we have um, a variety of different things. You have the little Virginia the Spanish bluebells, you have the little muscaris, the grape hyacinth, and the tulips coming up, all in a succession. Tulips are doing great. Some of those daffodils are very lacy and yellow, and I can't remember the name of those. They're very frilly. Uh, this is kind of an oddball, though. I ha haven't a clue. This must have gotten mixed in with everybody because I did not plant this color. This could have been a leftover bulb from last year. It's very, very possible. I'm just not sure what that is, but it's not really my favorite color. But I'm sure glad to have a little bit of color in this little section right now. And then right across the walkway, the same bulbs were repeated. The grape hyacinth. Look at the beautiful color on this little fairy Innis hyacinth. And the lovely thing about these, as I've mentioned so many times about these little hyacinth, is that every year you'll get more and more and more and more, and then this will just be filled with those lovely little plants. Not just that, but then there are um, some alliums in here, small alliums, tulips, liriope. So this tiny bed, which is part of the walkway, will be filled throughout the summer, the spring and the summer, with foliage and flowers. So far I've not planted any seeds in here. Um, I really don't think I need any because this is a geranium bed really. You can see the little geranium starting to pop up right there. I planted these as roots. Uh, I've never planted hardy geraniums as from seed and then you can see the lush thickness of this. It looks just like floppy grass right now, but in about two weeks, these little purple hyacinths will just be popping up all over the place. It'll look like a sea of purple. There's incredible abundant growth there in the raised rock garden that surrounds the pond as well, which was, that was also completely cleaned out a couple months ago and filled with bulbs. You know, it's just so hard to know what your garden's going to look like at this time of year unless you're familiar with, with what it's looked like in the past and you're aware of how tall your plants are going to get. So here is the front yard garden which you've seen many, many times, but I don't think you've ever seen it like this. Because usually when I film it, it's in full bloom. But right now, everything is about the same height and doesn't look all that interesting. Except it does to me because I do have some new things in here this year. I planted tons and tons of bulbs. I've got several foxgloves coming up that um, were from last uh, my little seedlings last year. And I also put 10 peony plants in here just about two weeks ago. And look, they're already coming up. 
Whoops. You're already, you already can see them coming up. That's called an, uh, the eye. Peonies are just so beautiful, in my opinion. They're just as beautiful as roses. They're so lush, beautiful, dark, uh, um, shiny green foliage, deep green, at least mine are. And the only problem with them is that the flowers don't last very long, but they make a great cutting flower. And so when we do the series on the cutting garden, that's where you might want to put a lot of peonies. So this is just chock full of cottage garden flowers. This is a country cottage garden, this front garden here. Um, okay, what's new? All the tulips are new. Um, uh, only six of my lavenders survived all the rain that we had. We were absolutely drowned out with rain this year. And they don't like to get wet feet. But this year it was inescapable because just everything was flooded. Irises, sedums. Back in the back, I've got some hollyhocks. I've got lots and lots of poppy seeds planted this year. So we'll come back here in a couple weeks. Every couple weeks, we'll come back here and take a look and see what's going on. The seeds that were planted that I just kind of tossed into this garden were things like bachelor buttons. I don't know if you can see them, they're so itsy bitsy. But the bachelor buttons, the poppies, and the larkspur. They are all growing up right now, at this very moment. It's so exciting when your little seeds start to come up. This is that little front section by the bridge that I completely took apart. I dug up absolutely everything out of here. And it doesn't look like much right now, and this one's going to take a couple years to reestablish itself. But when it does, it'll just be full of uh, roses. There are two ground roses in here. There are larkspur seeds in the back, bee balm. Lots of daylilies. Lots of muscari. And there were supposed to be 20 tulips here, but you know what? I think they rotted out because they were supposed to be right here in this empty spot. And this is where a lot of that rain gathered. And I, so I dug it up and there was nothing there. So either I stupidly dug the hole and then I forgot to pop anything in it and then buried it again, or else it just completely rotted out. But if they did rot out, I could not find any remains of those bulbs. That was so sad. That's so sad. Here we are on the other side of the front yard garden and up against the stone wall are hundreds and hundreds of daffodils. Now, I originally planted these daffodils about five or six years ago, starting with about 25 bulbs in this particular garden, and they have just spread and spread. And if you look down here on the bottom, you can see how many bulbs have been born from one single bulb. So every year I can come out here, or every couple of years I can come out here and I can split these apart and, and make this an even more full daffodil bed. But they're just a beautiful variety. I wish I could remember the names. I just cannot remember the names of these, but they're, they're a tall variety. And I just think that uh, daffodils are so rewarding. Now these spaces in between where you see nothing, actually underneath that earth there should be poking up pretty soon. I don't know if I can find them. No, I don't see them yet. But there are actually hostas planted in between all these bunches of daffodils. And if they don't come up, I'll just spread these daffodils all the way across this bed. They really are so amazing. One of the best investments you can make for your spring garden are daffodils. Daffodils and alliums. Absolutely beautiful. Here's the garden you probably know better than any of my gardens because I feature it more than any of my gardens. But um, when I did the video on planting a 
tulip, lasagna tulip vase. I had also poked in five tulips to go at the top of these fence topper finials, covered it with the ivy to cover up the plastic that didn't quite fit in this clay pot. And I mentioned at the time that this would probably stay green, and so it has. And so also, the bulbs are coming up. I think of all the gardens, this one looks the best so far. Maybe because it has cemetery separation, walkways, and a lot of interest in this protégée. There's so much going on in here, but it's sort of compacted into tidy little squares and rectangles and half circles that it makes it a little more pleasing to the eye if you look at it in an artistic sort of a way which is really one of the reasons I garden in the first place. It's a wonderful creative and artistic outlet. To design a garden, to watch things grow from seed, is just such a miracle. So let's take a look inside of this one. Pink impression tulips right down the center. There were 80 of them. I counted them all and they're all present and accounted for. I'm so happy about that and growing along the edges are broccoli, kale, and cabbages. So when those tulips are spent and the foliage is starting to turn yellow and get a little bit ugly, and I still have to leave it because that's going to provide the nutrients for the bulb next year, but, at, but by that time all these other plants will be much, much taller and they'll sort of camouflage the um, dying foliage in the center, especially the beautiful colors on these leaves and these grayish green cabbages and that dark green kale. Now this garden is, on this section, is shady in the afternoon and that's good for this sort of plant because they don't really like it very, very hot. They're more like cool weather vegetables. But what I'm really thrilled about are along the fence, and you remember this picket fence was just put in at the end of last year to keep the peacocks out of this garden. And I sprinkled in January, just sprinkled larkspur seeds. Look at these little larkspur seedlings. They're so thick. I'm going to have to thin them out and put them in other gardens, which I have no problem doing. I'd love to do that. I'd love to spread, spread the joy around. Also, um, here we have, ah, what are these? My goodness, purple sensation alliums, drumstick alliums all along the edge here, growing alongside these larkspur along this picket fence. Um, very, very tall. I think it's just going to be marvelous. So all that work that was put in at that time really has been worth it so far, even though I lost a lot of bulbs due to the horrific rains that we had over the last couple of weeks. Now those little transplanted hollyhocks, they're hanging in there they're looking a little raggedy because they've had to endure so much. They've had so much rain. They don't really like to get soaking wet constantly. But you can see there's still life in that little guy. This is just stock full of chives, blue alliums, and ivory alliums. And down the center again, there you see. Wow. These are going to be so pretty. You can get an indication right now already of the color because you can see the top of that little tulip right there. Pink sensation. That's what they're called. And then in between, little bitty fairy innis, which is that pale blue grape hyacinth. They're starting to come up and also the drumstick alliums. So the drumstick alliums will go all the way up through the summer and the foliage for the muscari, the little grape hyacinth, that will also hang around. And then here we have the beautiful cat mint. This is a perennial. I've had this in for a couple years. It gets really tall and bushy, very beautiful. And it has flowers that are very, very much the color of lavender plants. And then here we have some, I think this is called 
Swiss bright lights Swiss chard. Here's that little pocket by the gate in the potager that I filled with bulbs uh, several months back. The problem is that we have been absolutely inundated, inundated with rain. And even though this was a pretty um, good soil that was well drained, it didn't matter. Water was just sitting in here. And unfortunately, I know that it rotted out a lot of my bulbs. I planted 40 bulb, tulip bulbs in here, and only 15 are coming up. Five gladiator alliums, and there's only one that made it. I actually went in there and with my trowel and dug to find out, and sure enough, the bulbs were rotting out. But, something good happened. I was telling my friend about it, complaining about that um, large allium there that were the most expensive ones I had gotten. And I was telling her that they had big purple spheres if they had grown. And she said she had them growing wild in her backyard. And she hated them because she says they stink like onions. Of course, they're wild onions. So I went and uh, dug up about 60 of them right here and so that made up for all of those that I lost and some. I have enough to put those all over the place. Tulips was in a place where the rain did not collect and so they're all doing great. They're all present and accounted for. I think they're going to be really beautiful amongst these little violets. I did pull up all the ornamental cabbages because they just weren't doing anything. Well, we've definitely had a few failures here, and right here is where I had planted garlic. I'd probably say about 16 plants, and only three survived. The rest, I think, were drowned out by all those torrential rains that we've had, because that water really gathered here in this pocket. But, nevertheless, the wheelbarrow garden has done very well, and it's looking very pretty. This is a wonderful container garden you can put in the middle of your potager anywhere in your yard really in any garden looks great as a centerpiece so here we have um, I think there are 15 hyacinth popping up right in the middle are pink and white bubblegum tulips pansies are all around drumstick alliums grape hyacinth are in here. So this should be blooming for quite a while. In fact, with those pansies and the drumstick allium, this should go all the way through the summer. Now we're on the far edge of the potager in this little strip which has strawberries, daffodils, alliums. Didn't want the rutabecchia to come back, but it just did. And there it is. But Truthfully, what I'm so excited about, much more excited than anything else, are the fact that those winter seedlings are coming up all over the place. I planted um, Flanders poppies and Larkspur, and they're just everywhere. The Shasta daisies, I mean the Oxide daisies are doing great. These, this lovely little plant is an evening primrose toss the seeds in. These are fabulous plants. I always recommend them constantly. To t I tell you, buy them by the thousands and toss them in every garden because they go with every single plant you have. They're just papery, uh, delicate little pink cups. Only grow about 10 inches tall. They're not intrusive in any way, but they're just a lovely addition to every flower that you have. That lavender over there, I was really worried about it because it really was one of the things that was affected with all the water that we got. And they don't like that much water. But I think it's going to pull through, and I'm glad because it's right there at the entrance of the potager. So much rain, I know a lot of the bulbs got rotted out. But what really thrills me is this pussy willow bush, which I bought um, for about a dollar twenty-five because it was on the discount rack at Lowe's, I believe, and I guess they thought it was just about dead. There was no hope for it. It was about a foot tall, but look at it now. I always wanted a pussy willow bush. And this one is going to be, and is already, just beautiful. Look at those. Aren't they sweet? 
here in front of the little shop. There's a garden, which is just an extension of the basket garden. Now the basket garden is completely in disarray. In fact, this is one of the things that I have to redo completely this year. Uh, the basket weave has lasted for about three years. It's time to pull it all up and start over again. So I'll do a video on that. It's just the easiest thing in the world to do. The garden is, as you can see, quite a mess. Haven't done any cleanup in here. So we will just start an entire video on this garden. It's still got a lot of perennials in it and biennials, so don't have to do a lot. Mostly cleanup and some hardy annual seeds will go in here. And as far as the fencing goes, as I said, I have to pull all that up. I've already got a good start on my supplies and the rest of my supplies are right up there. I just have to get on the roof, get a ladder, get on the roof, get my pruners, and get some of that wisteria. And the last garden we're going to look at today is one that I'm going to do the video on, and this is the cutting garden. This is a garden that you've seen many times. It's usually full of coneflowers, rutabecchia, it's got roses and a lot of bushes and trees and daylilies. But this is where I plant my cosmos, my zinnias, all those cutting flowers. And this is the cutting garden. So I'm going to be spending a lot of time in this garden in the next couple of weeks. showing you how and what I plant and giving you some sort of an idea of the layout that you will need. This is a full sun garden except in the late afternoon we get some nice shade on this side and on this side which I haven't cleaned up at all is more of the shady side which has um, a lot of bulbs, foxgloves, Canterbury Bells, and right now all it just it just looks like nothing but dirt. But I promise you, there are things inside of this garden. <laughs> and um, what we need to do now is lay down a lot of compost, which I've already done in par parts of this garden. Uh, I've already got some things that I had seeded in here. I've got some bulbs, and amongst these mountain bluets, which are perennial cornflowers or bachelor buttons, better known as, are a lot of lovely little larkspur and poppies that are coming up. Just the tiny, tiny seeds at this point. So we'll come back to this garden later. Now I've got several other gardens, but I think I'm going to stop right here because I don't want to bore you to tears. Because really there isn't a whole lot to look at at this point. But we'll come back and walk through the other gardens at some other date. And the next video will be all about cutting gardens. So from Hopalong Hollow, this is Jerry. And we'll see you next time. Bye.